From a forgotten empire to one of the earliest cradles of civilization, here are eight lost ancient civilizations you've never heard of. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to They Will Kill You. Hit the like button and request any topics you'd like to learn about in the comments section below. Number 8. Xiongnu The Xiongnu was a union of nomadic peoples that inhabited large parts of present-day Mongolia and Siberia from the 3rd century BC to the 1st century AD. The ethnic identity at the core of the Xiongnu remains a mystery as there aren't sufficient historical sources confirming their origins. What's known is that they were fierce warriors, particularly on horseback. The Xiongnu Empire was founded by Modu Chanyu. He rose to power by ordering the execution of his father in 209 BC and became the supreme leader of the Xiongnu. The decline of China's Qin Dynasty enabled Modu to expand the borders of his empire into one of the largest in the world at the time. Considering that it was a steep empire, Xiongnu was unusually long-lived and much of this was due to constant raids on China, which supplied it with goods and forced the Chinese rulers to pay tribute. Number 7. Dacians The Dacians were the inhabitants of the ancient region of Dacia, located west of the Black Sea and near the Carpathian Mountains. They were a subgroup of the Thracian people which settled in the region during the 7th and 6th centuries BC. During the 1st century BC, King Burabista unified the Dacian tribes into a strong kingdom that the Roman Empire came to see as a major threat. After a series of campaigns, Burabista became a king of kings in the region. He conquered and annexed Greek cities on the coast of the Black Sea and supported Pompey in the Roman Civil War of 49-44. to Threatened by the growing strength of the Dacians, Julius Caesar had planned a military campaign against them. However, he was assassinated before he could carry out his attack. About a year later, Burabista suffered the same fate at the hands of the Dacian aristocracy and the kingdom he built began to crumble. Decebalus then came to power in 87 AD and restored Dacia to its former glory. He won a resounding victory against the Roman legions under Emperor Domitian. Dacians were fierce ambush warriors, well versed in guerrilla warfare and armed with a particularly devastating side-like sword called the Falx. Domitian eventually made peace with the Dacians and agreed to pay the Dacians a large annual tribute to keep the peace. This increased Delabalus's prestige and enabled him to consolidate power. Before we continue with our list, answer this question. Which Roman emperor was responsible for the conquest of Dacia, was it? A. Trajan B. Augustus C. Commodus D. Nero Let us know what you think in the comments section below and stay tuned to find out the right answer. Number 6. Nabataeans the Nabataeans were a nomadic Bedouin tribe that traveled with their herds throughout the Arabian desert, looking for pasture and water. Not much is known about them prior to the 4th century BC. They eventually rose as an opulent kingdom south of the Dead Sea. The source of their wealth was control over the caravan trade from the Arabian interior to the coast. The capital of the Nabataean kingdom was Petra, a mountainous fortress found in southern Jordan. The Nabataeans were accustomed to living in the barren desert and would use this knowledge and the rocky terrain against their enemies. There's evidence in present-day Petra that the Nabataeans were skilled at agriculture, harvesting rainwater and stone carving. During the reign of King Aratas III, the Nabataeans controlled Damascus as well as coal Syria. The kingdom was ultimately conquered and annexed by the Roman Emperor Trajan. Number 5. Iceni. The Iceni were a Britonic tribe that inhabited the east of Britain during the Iron Age and Early Roman era. The Iceni wore heavy rings of gold, silver or electrum around their necks and shoulders. They were also among the first minters to use their tribal name, Iceni, on coins. In 43 AD during Claudius's conquest of Britain, the Iceni were a significant power. Their king, 
the wealthy, Prasuticus, voluntarily became an ally of Rome. It was customary at the time for a client king to leave his kingdom to Rome upon his death. Yet Prasutagus tried to preserve his line by leaving his kingdom jointly to his daughters and the emperor. Upon his death in 61 AD, his wishes were ignored as the Roman troops seized the entire estate, flogged his widow, Bodicea, and abused his daughters. Bodicea subsequently led a raging revolt against the Romans that caused the destruction of several cities, including Londinium, present-day London. Bodicea's rebellion severely threatened the Roman rule in Britain, however. The Romans' superior discipline and tactics ultimately enabled their legions to crush the rebellion. Number 4. Natafian Culture The Natafian culture is rather unique because it supported a sedentary population even before the introduction of agriculture on a mass scale. It existed from 13,050 to 7,550 BC in the eastern Mediterranean region known as the Levant. Unlike the barren landscape of today, the Levant at the time of the Natafian culture was mostly woodlands. The Natafians settled the location of present-day Jericho, which would make the city the world's longest continuously inhabited urban area. The Natafians might have been the ancestors of the Neolithic communities in the region. Evidence suggests they purposefully cultivated rye, which is believed to be the earliest example of agriculture in history. Graves at Natafian sites represent the earliest evidence for domestication of the dog as people were found buried with canids. The Natafian culture also exhibits the oldest examples of bread making and beer making, dating back to approximately 12,000 BC. Number 3. Dillman Civilization One of the earliest sources mentioned in Dillman comes from an inscription on a door socket, dating back to 2300 BC. Historians believe that Dilmun encompassed areas of eastern Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Kuwait, and Qatar. The Dilmun civilization spoke Semitic, wrote in Sumerian cuneiform, and worshipped a god called Inzak. Dilmun was a major trading center that, at the height of its power, controlled the trade routes in the Persian Gulf. It was so influential in its trade with Mesopotamia that it ultimately earned a place in Sumerian mythology as the place where creation occurred. Described as the land of the living, it was depicted in writings as a paradise where fresh and salt water met. There was no pain or disease in this land and people never got old. Indeed, some scholars support the theory that the biblical Garden of Eden was located within the Dilmun civilization. So, which Roman emperor conquered and annexed Dacia? If you answered A, Trajan, then you're right. During the reign of Trajan, the Romans fought two wars against the Dacian. After his defeat in 102 AD, Decebalus was forced to become a client king. Yet, as soon as he rebuilt his forces, he launched attacks against the territories taken by the Romans. This led to a final Roman invasion, which concluded in 106 with the siege of Dacia's capital city, Sarmazegatusa. Decebalus, the last king of Dacia, took his own life as Roman forces were hunting him down. Number 2. Vincia Culture This culture draws its name from a Tell settlement found in the early 20th century at the Vincia Bello BRDO site in Serbia. Based on the archaeological findings, the Vincia culture dates back to 5700 to 4500 BC. The prehistoric society covered, aside from present-day Serbia, parts of Bulgaria and Romania during a population boom in southeastern Europe. The society was mainly preoccupied with food provision through animal husbandry and agriculture, as well as hunting and foraging. Vincia is believed to be among the earliest cultures to work with copper, as reflected by the discovery of tools and decorative pieces. Some of the artifacts created by the prehistoric society bear the Vincia symbols. Most historians regard these symbols as a form of decoration. There are some, however, who describe them as being among the earliest forms of writing. One hallmark of Vincia culture are distinctive figurines, which seem to exhibit human and animal features. Some ancient astronaut theorists have pointed to these figurines as an early example of contact 
between humans and extraterrestrials. Number 1. Nubian Pyramids The pyramids at Moreau, which are a UNESCO World Heritage Site, represent the fascinating remnants of the ancient Kushite kingdoms. From as early as 2500 BC to 300 AD, three kingdoms ruled consecutively in an area of the Nile Valley known as Nubia. It's the region within the north of present-day Sudan and it's believed to be one of the earliest cradles of civilization. In antiquity, Nubians competed with Egyptians but were also heavily influenced by them. Ancient Nubians were powerful warriors, renowned for their skill with the bow and arrow. In the 8th century BC, the Kushite invaded Egypt and established the Nubian dynasty, also known as the 25th dynasty of Egypt. However, about a hundred years later, they were expelled from Egypt by the Assyrian Empire. Nubian power was centralized around Moreau, the most recent capital of the Kushite kingdom. The pyramids built out of granite and sandstone served as tombs for Nubia's kings, queens and wealthy citizens. More than 350 pyramids have been discovered throughout Sudan. Their height ranges from 20 to almost 100 feet and their structure is distinctive from that of the Egyptian pyramids because they rise from relatively small foundations. The Nubian pyramids are tall and narrow. Today they serve as a reminder of one of the earliest and most impressive civilizations to take shape south of the Sahara. Thanks for watching. Which lost ancient civilization did you find most interesting? Let us know in the comments section below.